This wonderful day, we bring you news from the word of his kingdom. Such joyful news. The heavy burdens that you carry, you're going to even go into victory. And my precious sister, woman of God, evangelist, Shaneri, is going to bring you a special scripture that was on her heart. Praise the Lord. Good to be back this week. Yeah, uh, the Lord is speaking to the church about burdens. So much burdens about God's people in this time. But I have come to say to you today that burdens indeed are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, at Calvary, Jesus Christ took every burden. And if you still carry so much load on your shoulder, God has come to say to you, you have no reason carrying those, those burdens. The burdens are on us because we do not understand that those burdens were already taken. But all he's asking us to do is just come to Calvary today and upload that which is on our shoulder. And he will take it because that was the essence of the cross. That was the essence of Calvary. At Calvary, he took the burdens of men. And so today, we are going to look at the book of Habakkuk. A man who was in such a time as this. Habakkuk chapter 1. He was a great prophet, a minor prophet though. But he looked around him. All he saw was burdens on shoulders, men. And but today, you and I, so many ministers, so many watchmen upon, this, upon, this, upon the towers, so many intercessors are getting weary because when we look around us, all we see are just burdens upon shoulders of men. And we are getting confused because it seems as though judgment is being slackened. We now begin to ask God questions like Habakkuk I was asking the Lord. What is going on? I see burdens around me. So if you're carrying a burden, I want to say to you today, your burden will be lifted at Calvary. God bless you and welcome. Praise the Lord. All right, Jennifer, indeed sing that beautiful song that God put on your heart.
to the cross. And Prophetess Lorna, would you indeed give a word concerning burdens being lifted? You know, it's really beautiful what she was sharing with Habakkuk because everywhere he looked, you know, burdens, and sometimes we see it today, and he, he couldn't understand those things, and yet he was a prophet of God. And listen to his words. He said, therefore the law is slack, and judgment does never go forth. For the wicked doth come pass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. But listen to what was given him from the Lord. The Lord said, Behold ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. And this is, beloved, what is going to happen. It's God is going to work a work in our days. And so as we are uh, talking about the cross and about the, the lifting of the burden, God said, surely my anointing will break yokes and lift burdens. He said to cast our care upon him, for he careth for us. And so those burdens and those things that you might be carrying, Jesus came so that you would not have to carry that load, that he would lift them off of your shoulder today through the anointing, through the word of God. You say, how can this be? Maybe you're going through a deep valley right now, but the Lord says, I've sent my word to heal you. I've sent my word to deliver you. I've sent my word to lift that burden off of your shoulders today. And so even as the prophet could not understand it, God was saying, I will work a work. I will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can even ask or think. And so as we are here today, we're going to be sharing the joy and the victory that God gave us through the cross. Amen? And indeed, the cross that brings us great victory can absolutely heal us and deliver us from every single burden that ever hit mankind. The greatest burden is the fear of death. And even Jesus said, said that um, men's hearts would be failing them for fear for the things that are coming to pass on the face of the earth. And if we read Habakkuk 1, that sounds like today's newspaper. It seems like wrong judgment is being made and governmental decisions, wickedness is abounding. Even this morning, we, we heard of two more colleges where there, there were shootings and this terrible mass shooting that happened last week that this young man stated indeed he was demon-possessed. He asked them, are you, uh, what religion are you? And if they said they were a Christian, he would shoot them. And so we're living in a day of terror and fear. And God said these things would happen, and this is the enemy's tactics. But I want you to know that God took away the sting of fear. Perfect love, and perfect love was when he went to the cross for us. Because scarcely would a righteous man die for another. And we see many heroic things on the battlefield, but would one, only one could give his life, this pure, sinless lamb of God, could take the sins of all of mankind in the past and in the future. All we need to do is acknowledge it, to receive it as our very own Lord and Savior, that he did this for us. And so how did the Lord handle this thing with, with death? It is just so wonderful what he has done when we think about it. Where, oh death, where is your sting? And so the Apostle Paul in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians brings it out so very, very well. And it says, and this mortal must put on immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, that's the, with mortality, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory, we're talking about victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And because sin came upon all mankind, and the power of sin is the law, the law makes us to realize, surely, we have sinned. Also, our conscience. He is the Lord Jesus when he came. 
Indeed, he speaks to every man's conscience. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Isn't that wonderful? We don't have to be afraid. And that's why those beautiful martyrs in the second century after Christ had risen and when they were so persecuted and thrown to the lions, most of them sang a song because they knew that they were passing out of this life into the glorious liberty of the children of God. It is so wonderful. It's a reality, a wonderful reality, evangelist. Praise God. It's so, so awesome and it's so timely a message that the women of God were saying, everybody's carrying a body, but God is asking us to take it off. You're wondering how are you going to do that. That takes us to the book of 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 6 says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your burdens mm. upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour whom resisted steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same, of, of same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. All over the world, men are carrying burdens. Christians all over the world have one burden or the other they're carrying. Mm. Your burden may be different from my burden, but it would take humility for you and I to put down and hand over that burden to him. This was the reason why he went to the cross in the first place. He went to the cross so that he can make available Calvary, a place called Calvary. When we come to him, we have come to Calvary because the cross is a symbol of that which we are talking about. For like I said, behind the cross is the glory. When you lay down your burden to him, when you can't handle it, when you can't do it, humility is able to be, being able to recognize that there's nothing you can do about this issue. Humility being, is being able to know that only God can do it for you. Humility is understanding that the book of Psalm 114 said that when each Israel came out of, the, of Egypt and the house of Jacob from a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary and Israel his domain. And that is to say, here we're talking about Israel and Jacob being the same person. God fulfilled his promise to Abraham in Israel. The Israel he brought out of Egypt. But Jacob is a type of the flesh. Jacob is the trickster. Jacob is the one that the burden of the beast is upon. It is the one that the enemy puts the beast, uh, the, the burden on. Your Jacob, which is your flesh, is the one carrying the burden. And that is why you and I are feeling it so much. But he said when Jacob came out from the people of strange language, what happened? Then he became what? Judah was now God's sanctuary. He became the dwelling place of God. He became a carrier of God's glory. He became a carrier of that which came from the cross. He became a carrier of God's presence. And everything that had become a burden to him began to see him and they started fleeing. And that was why the mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like lambs. And one day men began to ask, why are you fleeing? Why are my bodies being lifted? Why? Because when God visits you, he would turn around your situation in a just in a split second, like he said to Habakkuk, that he would do a work in his days, that if he told himself, he would not believe it. But when the God turned around their captivity, they were like men that dream. And I know that that's what God is doing. And I have determined in my heart to lay down my burden of Calvary. I don't want to take it anymore. And I advise you to do the same. Take your burden, cast it out at the feet of Jesus, and he will take care of you. God bless you. Prophetess. You know, there's a beautiful scripture, too, in Isaiah 10, 27. And it shall come to pass in that day, and we have, this is the day, this is the day of the Lord, that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck, 
and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Beloved, it's because Christ is in us. It's because that of Calvary that we've been born again. You've been born again. If you said the sinner's prayer, you're born again. And listen to this scripture. It said, for whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory Amen. that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. You want that burden lifted from off your shoulder? Then it's a walk of faith. It's as the evangelist is saying. It's time to lay down those burdens and not pick them up. And let the word of the Lord, Christ in us a hope of glory. Let the word of the Lord come to you today. And know that God is a burden lifter. But he will not take something from you that you are not willing to lay down. So when you lay down your cares, you lay down your worries. What is a burden? It's a worry. It's a concern. It's a situation. It's whatever that you cannot do within yourself, but you know that God can do it. You begin to give it to God and lay it at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, I give you this. I give you this situation. I cannot change it, but I know the one that can. And Lord God, I believe by faith because you said the victory is in the faith. Faith in the Son of God. Faith in the Word of God knowing that God says, whatever you give to me and believe by faith, he said, I will, I will remove that burden. The anointing will come. And I believe even today, there are some of you that have been carrying burdens too long. Some of you have been carrying situations that you don't know what to do. You're at your wit's end. But the Lord through the Holy Spirit is saying to you today, Cast those burdens aside. Give them to the Lord. Say, Lord, here. And he wants to give you in exchange his word right. that you might feel that burden being lifted and know that God will not fail you. He didn't fail us when he went to the cross. And he didn't fail us in any time in our life. And so as we put our faith and trust in the one that will never fail you, God said, I will work it out for you. And burdens can cause a tremendous fear and weight. The Lord says, laying aside all those heavy weights and sins that so easily beset us and take them to the cross of Calvary. And there's many, many songs that have been birthed of the Spirit concerning just that, rolling our sins and burdens at Calvary. Of course, that is the cross where Jesus took all of our heavy burdens, that he might give us his peace. And this wonderful prophetic psalm in Psalm 103, and I've just absolutely lived it in the past, in the past months or so. It says, praise the Lord, O my soul, all my innermost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your sins. Of course, that was done at Calvary when he paid the price. Now listen to this. And heals all your diseases. I would like to just make a comment there. I remembered about a month ago when I went into the hospital room and received the report that my husband had a mass on his brain. I burst into tears and I started getting panicky. And I thought, oh no, I can't do this. I've got to release this burden to the Lord. So I called the wonderful intercessors, including these beautiful women of God, and many, 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 many people began to pray. And, and it looked pretty dim. It looked like he was going to have to have surgery. And so anyway, as I was going over the promises of the Lord and releasing it, I go back to his room, and he was just so oppressed, and he was crying. And I said, God's going to see us through. And so by lifting that burden, which is in modern day, English, a worry that could bring us even, uh, people even go into mental illnesses and depression when that burden isn't lifted. And I am telling you, God came through. Indeed, there, a supernatural healing came forth to my husband, Pastor Ken Meyer, and he is just doing great. I want to say right now, with my precious uh, friends agreeing, my precious sisters in Jesus' name, 
be healed of that disease, be healed of cancer right now. I, I, the Lord is speaking to me about lung cancer in the name of Jesus. The, whoever calls upon his name, uh, upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Just repeat right now, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I not only receive you as my Lord and Savior, you're my healer and my deliverer. I give you the burden right now. And there are many, many people that are ill, even unto death. But I am telling you, this sickness is not unto death. You shall live and declare the works of the Lord. And that takes me to the book of Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 16 down says, In that day, and this is that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, you are that Jerusalem. And he said, fear down not. Do you know that fear brings a burden on us? Right, right. Fear is in that burden that we carry. It weighs us down. It intimidates us. And to Zion, let not their hands be slack. Mm -hmm. Do you know that when you carry a burden on your shoulder, it slackens your hand? Right. The weight of that burden will cause you not to be able to do anything because depression sets mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. and you have your hands hanging down. Mm -hmm. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Never you forget how mighty, how sovereign, how powerful our God is. Never you forget who you have given your life to. Never you forget that we have a father and who is a deliverer, a redeemer. The Lord of hosts is his name. He said he will, he will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Then I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly. The reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halted. You might have halted. You might have come to a stop because of that weight. You could not move anymore. But I've come to say to you, there are many who are standing in the gap for you. There are many who are interceding for you. There are many who are speaking the word of faith into your life. And God is saying that the burden of such people is also lifted. Not just you who carry the burden, but your intercessors that carry your burden also. God has seen your sorrow and he's taken it away from them. And he said he's going to break that affliction. And I pray for you today that every affliction upon your shoulder that came as a result of the enemy's attack on you. This day, by the reason of the anointing that came from the cross, is broken in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing and deliverance today in Jesus' name. We have a couple more minutes. Prophetess Lorna, do you have a Amen. word? You know, it's so beautiful because I believe this program is one of joy. I believe this program is one of healing. And I believe if you're listening today, that all you have to do is receive. Because of the cross, he not only paid the price for our sins, but he paid the price for our healing and our deliverance. Amen. And so if you're listening today, and maybe you're sick in your body, he will heal you for Jesus' sake. He will heal you because he paid the price for your healing. You don't have to beg him. It's your inheritance when you receive the Lord. And so today, with the joy of the Lord, to not only receive salvation, but your healing, mm -hmm. your sanctification. Because the Lord God will heal you for Jesus' sake. May you be blessed and encouraged today. Because you not only have hope, you can put your faith and trust in the finished work of the cross. And because of what he did, you can receive it by faith and walk in the victory of that cross and resurrection power. The Lord God bless, bless you. you with his mercy and with his goodness. Get in touch with the cross television if we can be of any help to you. The cross television is a wonderful, wonderful ministry. Be sure and write to them. And if you've been touched by this program, mention the word of his kingdom. God bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and give you his peace.